From the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, it's Retro Nerd Girl with a film review for you. Today, I'll be reviewing the movie Existence, released in 1999, starring Jude Law, Jennifer Jason Lee, and Ian Holm. Directed by David Cronenberg. Genre, action, horror, sci-fi. The rating is an R. 31 million Canadian dollars estimated, which is about 21 million dollars in 1999. My rating is an 8.5. The synopsis is a virtual reality game creator, Allegra Geller, and her assumed security guy, Ted Peichel, explore her new game while fighting for their lives. Enjoyment. When this film first came out, I pretty much overlooked it because I thought it would be too dark for me and it was also labeled as a horror film. The tone of the poster is very eerie and I actually really didn't want to have anything to do with it. Over the years, I heard so many recommendations for the film, especially when I talk, listen, read, and watch anything about the kind of films that I like concerning virtual reality. This film was always mentioned. So finally, I blocked out a slot of time in the daytime when I was feeling really secure that I wouldn't get freaked out very easily, and I watched the film. And to be honest, there was no need for that at all because it wasn't scary to me and I absolutely loved it. It's so up my alley. It's not a horror film in my opinion or even an action film, but more of a sci-fi thriller. The pacing. At an hour and 37 minutes, the length is okay, but the film feels much longer. Uh, that's because the pacing is just awful in the beginning, but I think it's worth putting up with for the payoff in the last 30 minutes of the story. Um, the slow parts really work during the rewatch of this film. You start to notice some details you hadn't the first time. Story. The story matter of virtual reality was a very popular genre for a while, especially just before the year 2000, and the threat of the Y2K virus was looming among the people. A few films that come to mind that were made around this time was The Matrix and The 13th Floor, both released the same year as this film in 1999. The film is also reminiscent of Total Recall in the coloring, the entrance to the existence game, and questioning reality at the end of the film. But what makes this story a lot different from the others is the Cronenberg stamp he explored in his earlier film Videodrome, released in 1983, dealing with the subject matter of yet another new media at the time, video, which was changing the landscape of entertainment in the early 80s. The first time I watched the film, I got a strong sense that this was an anti-virtual world film because it is revealed that the two main characters, Allegra and Ted, are actually pro-real world agents. Pro-real worlders aren't the good guys. They are more like terrorists. And moreover, the film doesn't make a case for their point of view on screen. I watched a few reviews of this film that really took a personal offense to the connections of this movie to modern gaming. The pose of the story idea is what if virtual reality was so realistic that you did not know if it was real? It was not meant to be a commentary about gaming, but gaming was just a brilliant vehicle to present the idea. Many movies of the time viewed virtual reality as a fantasy space for humans to create worlds as we see fit. The fantastic adventures of Star Trek The Next Generation's holodeck comes to mind. But the most logical use of virtual reality would be to play incredible games in the first person point of view. 
Technology in general is catching up to Cronenberg's vision as we see more and more realistic computer graphics being implemented in the games. A little off topic, but there's also a spooky image of people completely absorbed in a flat glowing box screen in their hand and using their fingers to navigate it. This film was made in 1999, and those were pretty much 2017 smartphones. Uh, the first smartphone was invented in 1992 and released in 1994. But the smartphone as we know it was first released by Apple in 2007, unofficially referred to as the iPhone 2G. In that very same scene, the characters aren't moving and conversing with each other, but they are absorbed in their technology. This film predicted what we as a society are doing right now as person-to-person -person real world relationships are diminishing into technological interfaces. The other ingenious story idea that I loved was having the technology actually be living things. In the film, the technology factory is a farm raising amphibious creatures for their nervous systems to use in the MetaFlesh game pods. They are also using them to make undetectable weapons made of organic substances. Cronenberg mentioned in an interview, and I'm paraphrasing here, that the biological technology is an extension of human use, like an arm or a leg. Technology comes from man, so it's alive. We see that as the pods that the gamers are using are very fleshy looking and they even make sounds while they're being played and hook directly into the human body with what looks like an umbilical cord. A leg rope explains that there is a symbiotic nature between the user and the organic game module as it is tapped right into the nervous system. Many people compare this film to The Matrix, which is the most popular movie about the subject of virtual reality. The biggest difference between the two is that The Matrix is a world that humans are involuntarily imprisoned by the technology. In this film, the humans want to be imprisoned inside of the technology to escape a boring reality. And even at one point, Allegra refers to the real world as boring. Another big difference between the two films is that we know when the characters are in the real world and when they are in the Matrix. But in this film, you're not really quite sure what world you're in except for uh, noticing a difference in Allegra Geller's hairstyle. Uh, we don't have much knowledge about what the real world actually looks like because we're not sure what reality we are presented in the film. The challenge. The film starts out with a focus group meeting to test the game existence by the company Antenna Research. The game creator, Allegra Geller, is leading the first wave test enclave of 12 slave MetaFlesh game pods and their users into the game, hooked up into her queen pod. It seems simple enough to follow. I think I'll call this layer of reality the existence world because at this point we believe that it's reality and this is where we're starting at. There is an attempt on Allegra Geller's life during the test where she's pulled out of the existence game. Allegra then plays the existence game again with Ted Peichel. Within that game, they play another game. I'll call it the game within the game. <laughs> it's so it's kind of confusing, but there are, it's it's actually a fun concept that you could play a video game and then enter another part of the game while in the existence world, Allegra exits to a world called Transcendence, where the Transcendence game is being tested by the company Pilgrimage. 
So the big surprise at the end is that the existence world in the film is actually not reality. However, when re-watching the film, it's so easy to notice that there are several clues to tell us that the existence world is really a game. Everything is uh, labeled. Uh, even Allegra says to Ted, you're labeled. That seems to be a theme in the film. More than twice, Allegra says while she's in the existence world that the only way she can know that everything is okay with the game is that she play existence with someone friendly. And she asks Ted, are you friendly or are you not? Just as a game character would do. When Ted is rescuing Allegra in the car, the background is a fake background using rare screen projection indicating that the world is not real. Empathy. The empathy is a little tough for me because it changes so much. At first, it seems as if Ted is our eyes and our avatar in the game because he's the newbie. Ted says all the things we're thinking and wondering about all of the strange things that are happening around him. He is drawn to finish the game as one might be drawn to see the end of a movie to find out what happens in the adventure. When Ted finds Allegra at the trout farm, she acts suspiciously robotic, just like a game character. It is then more than ever that Ted is our guy. He is likable and we want him to succeed at whatever he's doing. But the film takes the rug from under us and flips the concentration of the empathy for a few minutes to Allegra. And Allegra is really a hard character to like because she's selfish, arrogant, and extremely manipulative. The best way to explain Allegra is that she seems a lot like a drug pusher, seducing us into the game and herself being hooked on her own drug. When Allegra and Ted are revealed to be the anti-gaming players in the game, they seem cold and odd and detached like, like game characters. They have no expressions a few seconds before exploding into expression about their mission call, Death to Transcendence. The whole scene is very hyper-realistic and unnatural. And we're just onlookers wondering if perhaps the audience was meant to be the game user in the game. It feels very interactive, but unfortunately the empathy is pretty much gone by then. However, the information we learn by the end, all of the things that we see in the game and the two main characters tie in wonderfully. Since these characters are actually pro-real world agents, their thoughts don't hide well in the game. What could have been a utopia in the virtual world is now a putrid, diseased, and gross place because the users think so badly of the technology. They detest the game, so the aesthetics of the game is unpleasant. Their thoughts are creating the negative outcome in the game. The technical aspects. The film looks like a very gritty, practical effect filled movie, but surprisingly enough, there were some CGI components in the film, but used sparingly. This little creature wasn't too bad for 1999, and most of the other practical effects were used for the gross trout farm scenes along with the metapods in all of their practical glory. The Gristle Gun, it's a great creative idea reminiscent of the handgun used in the movie Videodrome. There was also some chroma keying to bring the Chinese restaurant and the factory in the same scene. They were actually about 50 miles apart from each other. The edited transitions were pretty cool, a nice blend from scene to scene. It's an artistic film without the pretentiousness. There's a lot of very detailed sets and incredible backgrounds that really make you feel that the world was fully explored. I felt that there was great sound design. The sound of the game pods and use is very erotic and I actually bought that they were alive. 
the score was very dark and mysterious and perfect, allowing the audience to peel back the layers of this great story. The performances. Jennifer Jason Lee was great as Allegra Gella. Jude Law played Ted Pico very naturally. He played the character very likable. He has an, a Canadian accent in the film and I noticed that his accent changes into his normal English accent at the last scene. Ian Holm, William Defoe, and Christopher Etchison were vastly underused and what's even funnier was that the characters even mentions it. Best part of the film. I really like the film from beginning to end but I think that the wacky ending really did it for me uh, and the wonderful afterglow of thought it provides. And I must include the creative construction of the gristle gun scene. It was so fantastic to see Peichel put it together like a puzzle from the bones of a food dish. How creative. I just loved it so much. The ending. The ending to me was especially brilliant. Uh, you could question the blatant possibility that the game isn't over when a character in the film asks, are we still in the game? Are they still in the game? It's up to the viewer to decide. Personally, I think they're still in the game. It could be that the real world is somewhere we haven't even seen in the movie. In some lab somewhere. My wish list. I have a few questions about this film. Um, <laughs> if Allegra knows that there are people after her and the seminar leader um, knows that there are dangerous characters in their own camp, why on earth would they hold an event in such a vulnerable location in the middle of the night with no security? Also, why didn't Allegra play Existence with gas or carry vinegar? Why did it have to be Ted? Was it that Ted and Allegra being partners in the Transcendence world had to be connected together? It's possible, but I feel as if I'm overreaching for that answer. I also uh, wish that some of the characters were recycled in the game more, as they did with the cashier making him a soldier in yet another layer. I also wish that the film kept the pace of the last 30 minutes throughout the film here and there without losing any of its gravity. I know it's very difficult, but it had to build up to, to the end, but I feel as if the frenetic energy could have been used a little bit earlier in the film. I also wish that it weren't so grotesque. It probably turns off a large audience, but personally I didn't mind it so much because it had a purpose in the story. But it's so hard to share a film you like with a lot of people when it has so many gross scenes. Uh, I know that turns off a lot of people. Um, I also wish that the film chose one person to be the person the audience really roots for because it really makes all of these people emotionally forgettable. You're, you're not rooting for them and you don't care when terrible things happen to them. The summary. One of the cool aspects of the film is that I think that the audience could be considered the user in the story. Here's an exception where none of the characters have our empathy and we end up being extremely engaged in the story. And the beauty of the film is the countless ways you can interpret what happened. The other interesting idea that the film inspires is the reality of reality. Allegra says in the film, everybody's already playing the game, insinuating that reality is a game much like existence, where you have to find out the point of the game by playing the game. So what is reality? It's really about perspective, right? I'm so really glad that the story did not go the whole like, let's go save the world. You know, how many times have we seen that plot point? So. This was a very, very unique film. Anyway, I'm really glad that I got the chance to watch this film and I was totally blown away with how cool the story unraveled and it keeps getting better for me after re-watching it a few times. 
It's bizarre, cringy, creepy, and oddly enough, I liked it. <laughs> That sums up my review. I hope you liked it. This is Retro Nerd Girl signing off. Take care, movie lovers. I'm off to my next review.